How's it going, everybody? Nathaniel from RC Insight here, and today I am back with another Perplexus video for you guys. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Perplexus portal. It just came out in the past week in North America, and I've got my hands on it, and I am so excited to talk about this Perplexus with you guys. So let's jump straight into it. All right, so this Perplexus became available in the past week in North America and has been available in Europe for a little bit longer. I got it for around $40 and it features uh, 150 obstacles as well as three checkpoints. So three checkpoints, very similar to that of the Perplexus original right down to the fact that they are all right down here at the start, uh, one, two, and three. Now, at 150 obstacles, that would make this the longest Perplexus to date. Technically, the 3x3 Rubik's Perplexus crossover is 225 obstacles, but it just is very different, so I don't count that. This is definitely the longest of the traditional style Perplexus, and there is more track here than the 3x3 Rubik's Perplexus offers anyway, so I can firmly say that this is the longest and largest Perplexus in terms of the actual amount of course and obstacles that we get to date. Now, it wouldn't be a new Perplexus without there being a gimmick, so let's quickly talk about what that is. I'm going to take it off its stand here, and it does come with a stand, by the way, just a little clear plastic one, nothing all too special. But, so, looking at the maze itself, this little gimmick here, it's the portal gimmick, and you've got these three little buttons, or portals, I suppose you could call them, uh, on the outside that you can push, and you'll notice as you push them in, it, uh, it moves the yellow portions of the track. So that is the gimmick. It's actually pretty simple, but it interacts with the course in a lot of ways, more than I can count. It comes into play a lot, sometimes pretty simply, sometimes really creatively, which I'll dive into a little later when we talk about more of the specific obstacles. But uh, yeah, I wasn't sure about this gimmick at first, but it is, it's very straightforward. You know, it's not super crazy, but uh, it, it really is unique in the way it's used. And I, I actually think it's a lot of fun. So I've come around on it. Nothing, nothing too ridiculous, but it really is integrated nicely into this maze. So when I first saw this Perplexus announced, I was really hoping that this would be like a return to form for Perplexus, a return to that classic style Perplexus. Looking at it, I thought, oh, maybe this is finally going to be like a real classic style Perplexus. And uh, I'm very happy to say that this is absolutely a classic style perplexus. This is the most classic style perplexus we have had in a very long time. And I was honestly even hoping or thinking that they didn't even need an, another gimmick. They could just do another puzzle like the original or the epic or the rookie. I would have been more than happy with just a very straightforward perplexus challenge without having, you know, the, the unique gimmicks of the twist or the warp or even more out there, the, the revolution or that type of thing. But, in this case, the gimmick here is really integrated well, and so it doesn't bother me in the slightest, but this is absolutely a return to form. It does feel like one of those classic and original mazes. In fact, I would put it in the company of the very four original, the, uh, the Rookie, the Original, and the Epic, uh, as well as the Twist. To me, this falls in that category and it is the fifth Perplexus that, that really fits in like that very original vibe. You could put them all side by side and think they were from the same era. So I absolutely love that. This reminds me a lot of the the epic. And and to some extent, you know, the 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 warp and the Death Star also feel more like original perplexes, is not as much as this does, but certainly this is the first like real large scale just classic style perplexus we have got since the death star so it's been at least seven or eight years and i am just thrilled with how this perplexus has turned out it was so so much fun playing through it uh it's not necessarily the most challenging of the perplexes is. Uh, I, I'm also a lot better at perplexes than I used to be, so it's, it's hard for me to fully gauge the difficulty, but I just absolutely love playing through this. There's unique obstacles, a fun course, a, a challenging course in some places. It was just a nostalgic experience. It was a blast. I couldn't put this down in the first few days that I had it. I powered through it right, right early on because this was just that great of an experience. 
I also got to say, I absolutely just love the color scheme of this Perplexus. The red, the white, and the yellow, just they go so great together. There's a hint of gray in here as well. But the red as an accent just looks looks so really good, and it's not really a Perplexus color. We've gotten a lot of. I think there were some in the original Rookie, but this is just a very sharp-looking Perplexus in terms of color. Now, red is my favorite color, but overall, I, I really like the way it looks as well, which is just another thing that moves it up in my books. So speaking of the difficulty, it's hard for me to really pin a difficulty down here. Uh, like I said, partly because I'm better at Perplexus. I did play through the Epic again and the Death Star to try and get a comparison. And I do think that this falls under, it's a little bit easier than the Epic and the Death Star. Not a lot easier. You know, it's still up there in the more challenging. It's more challenging than the original for sure. And so it's definitely a challenging Perplexus. Uh, it's, it's on the upper end of the difficulty, but I'm not sure it is more difficult than the Epic or the Death Star. I think I'll have a better sense of the difficulty when it comes around to me doing my ranking video, so keep an eye out for that. Now, there is one thing about the difficulty here that I noticed in particular, and that was that this difficulty ramps up progressively, and I haven't felt any of the other perplexuses have been like that. So a lot of the other perplexuses, you have kind of challenging obstacles kind of interspersed throughout and some less challenging, and it's, it's more or less balanced in terms of difficulty across the maze. For the portal, I felt like the difficulty consistently ramped up throughout the course. And so, you know, the first checkpoint was relatively simple, second checkpoint was a little bit more medium difficulty, and the final stretch was quite challenging. And so that also made it a little harder to gauge, but I like the difficulty ramp. I think that's a really fun idea, and uh, I really like the way it was executed here. It really does feel like you're progressing through a, a more and more challenging obstacle course, which is great. So that, that was a, a fun little feature that I just thought was worth pointing out. So getting into the unique obstacles now, uh, there are a lot here, more than I could really count. So I'm gonna just draw attention to some of them that I really like. Uh, so firstly, like I said, you know, the the little portal buttons interact with the course in so many different ways. Uh, there's more than I can highlight, but there's definitely some aspects of this that stand out to me. So the first really unique obstacle comes around 27 and you can see those yellow spikes pointing up through the track. The ball kind of settles into the holes and then you gotta use the spikes to push them up and through, which I thought was a really creative use of some track pieces. I really, really enjoyed that feature. Then a little later on here around 32, again, you have another track feature, which kind of this theme comes up a couple of times where, you know, in order to get on to 32, you have to leave the button unpushed, but then you have to actually push it out to reach to the end point. So there's several parts throughout this course. Uh, actually, the other side of this is another example of that, where, you know, while you're on the yellow portion of the track, you actually have to adjust its positioning. And so it feels fun, fast paced and fresh. And I really, really liked that aspect of the, the, the puzzle. Around 41 and 42 here was another really fun section. It's the other side of that uh, little peg section that you push through, where you alternate through having the track, uh, you know, lowered and raised with the marble kind of going like on top and then underneath and on top and underneath. So some really fun creative usage of the portal buttons there as well. Yet another great use of the portal buttons for a unique obstacle here at uh, 83 as well. You can see uh, you have a two wall section transition into a one wall section. You have to navigate around the, uh, the obstacle across the course there. This was a really nice touch and creates a really interesting, unique and challenging obstacle. I absolutely loved that. There is also an absolutely incredible tunnel section throughout this course. You can see it starts here and it goes through a series of different tubes uh, that, that wraps around a significant portion of the course and it is just absolutely amazing, fantastic. There are not enough tunnel sections in Perplexus, this is in my opinion. I think the only two that really have them are the Epic and the Rookie slash Rebel. Uh, there is kind of the Draco is sort of all tunnels, but I don't know, it's kind of weird to, to count that. But the tunnel sections here actually borrow some ideas from the Draco, uh, but they execute them really well. I, I just think it's absolutely a fantastic 
fantastic usage of tunnels. And so you'll notice like some stuff like this where you've got these little spots. And initially I thought those were areas where you would actually fall out of the tunnel. There's another one here, but they are actually spots for you to trap the ball so that you can flip it upside down so you don't fall out. So that's a really cool feature. You gotta kind of fall into those spots because otherwise you just go flying out of the tunnel the way it's designed. You kind of gotta get them trapped, flip it, reorient it. Uh, same thing through here. Some of these are actual spots where you can fall through. And again, you have to orient it such that you, you don't fall through all of these holes around the tunnel, get to the bottom. So just a brilliant tunnel section that they've put together here one of my favorite aspects of this puzzle. A couple of the last few other things in terms of unique obstacles that I want to point out is this red section right here around 130 has some really interesting 131 is kind of like a butterfly section but the entrance and exit to it is just very different 133 with kind of that narrowing ring is an idea we saw I think way back in the twist uh, has been expanded upon and even these transition sections are kind of that real classic uh, you know no wall at the top sections where you're you're transitioning from from side to side. Very, very well put together. A very challenging section. Very challenging. And there's also a really fun usage of the portal buttons again here around uh, 138. You can see in the middle there where this guy's coming up and down. You actually roll across the track, drop down on top of the orange, the, the marble rolls through and you push it back up again. You'll, you'll have to see it to understand how it works, but really creatively well done. A super fun and challenging obstacle. Uh, and I think the last one I wanted to kind of highlight here is this 141 section where you're actually kind of like on the inside of another track section. So some really fun new creative obstacles that pop up in this one. There are also tons of classic obstacles, one wall sections, some difficult one wall transitions like over here at 116 to 117 where the wall goes from the outside to the inside which are just kind of some classic challenging one wall tactics. Not really any butterfly sections in this, uh, lots of drop sections as well though as we've come to expect like uh, around 54 I think it is. Um, where here it is, uh, right here, you know, uh, kind of like one of those classic drop sections, which is a lot of fun and a little bit of a challenge. Uh, also, lots of these sections where you're dealing with, uh, you know, a sidewall transition where there is no uh, wall at the top to prevent your marble from rolling off. Some of those are very challenging and very well executed. Plus, just some other types of track that we've seen interspersed more recently. The groove track where the ball rolls along the inside. You got this red wire here. Uh, you've also got this white one over here. So lots of classic obstacles, some stair sections as well interspersed throughout. Just a, a really good variety overall. One last thing I want to point out here is that there is a ball hold. If you actually push it up, you can see it in the, the corner here. You There we go. Carefully roll it in like so, and then it presses over. So you have a ball hold so that your marble's not rolling around. Probably should have been using that for the audio's sake uh, so that you didn't have a ball rolling around this whole video, but that does exist. It's a nice little feature uh, just to make note of. So the last thing that I feel like is worth mentioning here is that this is a very dense perplexus. As you can see, there is a lot going on here. And so sometimes the challenge can just even be that some of your views are pretty obscured of what's going on. And so figuring that out can be a challenge, but a good challenge, a fun challenge, not like say the three by three perplexus Rubik's fusion, where it just was so confusing. You couldn't see what we were doing this. It adds to the challenge in a fun and acceptable way. And it is definitely the most densely packed of any of the perplexus mazes, I pulled out the epic and compared it, and wow, there is a huge difference in the density of what is packed in here, which is why this is a longer perplexus, but I absolutely love just the dense maze-like feel that this perplexus presents. So this review has gotten pretty long. I've covered a lot of things. I've tried to go pretty in depth. So thank you for those of you who have stuck with me through the end. My final recommendation on it, if you couldn't already tell, this is a glowing endorsement. Uh, you know, I know recency bias is a thing, but I could almost go out on a limb and say this is my favorite perplexes of all time. Again, that might change and you'll get a better sense of it when I do my ranking video, but as it stands right now, this is definitely right up near the top. I, I don't want to say it's my favorite because I just got my hands on it, but I had such a blast playing this. If you have dabbled in perplexes at all. This is a must buy. And if you're looking to get into perplexes, I don't know if there's a much better place to start. I mean, maybe you want to start at the original, but this is 
this is more fun than the original, in my opinion. There's just so many clever design choices. It's so much fun. This is a great Perplexus. I, this is the most fun I have had playing Perplexus in years. I was so excited to get through this this puzzle. I was so excited to review it and talk about it with you guys. And I'm so excited to do a walkthrough for you guys. I have not been this excited about something like this in a very long time. So go get it. That is my recommendation. This is just fantastic. And that is my review for the Perplexus Portal, guys. Like I said, a little on the long side, but thank you for sticking with me. It is worth it. It is worth it 110% to get this absolute beast of a perplexus. If you like the video, click the like button down below. It is a great way for you to show your support. Support all of my perplexus content. I am the place to go for perplexus on YouTube. And likewise, since I'm the place to go, subscribe as well so that you can see all my new perplexus videos as soon as they come out. If you haven't already, then that way you can be notified as soon as my walkthrough videos for the perplexus portal come out, which I'm hoping should be out over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm probably going to break it up into a few parts just because of the size of this thing, but it's not going to be a two-year wait like you're still waiting on the 2x2 Perplexus Rubik's Hybrid. So yes, uh, walkthroughs coming soon for this, so subscribe so you can be notified as soon as those come out. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and I will see you all in the next one.